We want to balance the blades so that no blade is heavier than the others. Um, and this will help make it descend straight up and down rather than coning as it comes down. Um, to do this, you just take your, your hub and you turn it sideways and give it a little spin. Let's see. That one's, I got a rubber band that's a little bit too far down. Okay, give it a little spin. And you're going to notice that one blade wants to hang down low. And in this case, it's two blades that are, that are hanging lower than the other one. We want, it to, um, we want it to be able to spin without it um, stopping at the same point every time. Um, and then to balance it, so basically this blade on top is light. So we're going to take some modeling clay just take a little bit and we're going to press it. We want to go about halfway in the middle of the blade. And this is where you're going to have to do a, a number of little trial and errors here. In the, and the clay doesn't want to stick, of course. All right, so I got my clay on that one blade here, so we'll give it a little spin again. Okay, so my rubber bands, the green one and the orange one, they're still coming down to the bottom. So that means that this one is still a little bit light, so I'll add a little bit more clay. This is probably going to be too much right there. Actually, that's pretty good. See, before... I had the orange and the green that were coming down. Now they're, they're about even. So that is about the right amount of clay for this helicopter. So when this one descends, it should spin really nice. Now the direction of spin, it's going to spin towards the, ro the, the rounded edge. So on this one, if you're looking at it, it's, it's spinning clockwise. And that's the way it's going to spin in the flight. Now to prep the rocket, it's pretty easy. We just bring the, the blades down, but you have to be careful. You have to make sure that the rubber band is not too close where it will get it wedged into the uh, slot. So I just like to take the rubber bands and spread the rubber bands across the face, the flat face of the hub. We'll do this for all three uh, rubber bands. Go over the top of the little tab a little post and just spread them out a little bit and then we'll put it into the tube now we got a long shock cord here and what I typically like to do is I like to crochet it which is making a series of loops so I'll, I'll crisscross it um, and keep keep the the, uh, the string on top rather than on the bottom keep it on the top and then make a loop, push it through, grab it with your fingers. Now we got a new loop. And just keep doing this all the way up the uh, shock cord. See, I've got a series of loops. And when the shock cord expands, it'll just go floop, 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 floop. It'll pull all those loops apart. Um, and by doing this, it makes it a little bit more organized so that when it starts coming out of the tube, I need something to hold this down. They're all going to spring open while I finish crocheting this. So I got my series of loops, and then I'll just shove those in there. It's easier to shove in that way, too. Oh, my my uh, piece of clay fell off. That's the, the disadvantage of, of a modeling clay. And um, if you have some, I would recommend using the fix-it epoxy clay because that's an adhesive, and it also adds weight, and it will um, stick a lot better to the balsa wood.
and this rocket, rocket doesn't require wadding. Um, the blades are going to get a little bit sooty after the flight. But that's okay, it's just soot. It'll, it'll wipe right off. And it doesn't seem to affect the flight at all. So we'll put the blades in, make sure they kind of uh, overlap each other in an organized way. So this blade I want to pop out over the top. So now this one's on top, that one's on top, and the final one's on top. And that way they slide in better into the nose cone. And it's almost ready to launch. Now if you want to put a launch lug on it, um, as I said before in one of the previous videos, you'll put it between two fins and what I do is I like to put the launch lug right at the balance point of the rocket. Of course I want to use a rocket engine. So you want to put your rocket engine in first so you have the weight of the motor. And this is how we're going to install the rocket motor anyway. We're going to just slide it in. If you got the engine block in there, it will stop against the engine block. If you don't, it, you know, make sure it sticks out probably a half of an inch. And just wrap tape around the perimeter. This is why we have the engine mount tube sticking out. And then squeeze it down really tight. And that locks the engine in there. It's not going to come out and it's not going to go forward. And this is the way you'll fly it. Um, so, but now I can balance it. Okay, my balance point is right about there. And then I'm going to draw a line right down the middle of the two fins. And it doesn't have to be exact. Um, typically in competition, you won't have a launch lug. But in this, because of this rocket, because it goes so high, I actually do want a little bit of drag. Get some super glue. And this this I'm using thick super glue. Make sure that launch lug is straight up and down along that two line. Get some kicker. Set off the reaction. And just wipe it off. All right, so this is actually in launch configuration. Um, the only thing that I would do is I would paint this thing because it's going to go so high. Um, it's going to be hard to see. You know, at, at 1,500 feet, seeing this rocket that's about 18 inches long is pretty hard. Um, it's really tiny up there. And I would also take um, some permanent magic marker and I would paint with the marker the underside of the blades. Um, you could use like a red or an orange, something to, to contrast against the sky so that as it's spinning you can see the blades. Um, when it lands on the ground, this is uh, the color of dry grass, so you're never going to see these. So if you put some color on it, that's really going to help um, help you to find it. Uh, I think that's about it. Um, again, I would recommend launching this in competition off of a, a rail or a, um, a, a competition launch tower. Um, you could use a piston launcher. Um, in, in a national event like NARAM, you might want to use a piston launcher because you want that extra altitude. The higher it goes, the, the longer it's going to take to fall down because it's got more distance to travel. Um, but a piston launcher is going to go so much higher. Uh, it's just, just going to make seeing it a little bit harder. So have your uh, binoculars ready. Have a good pair of running shoes on because, like I said, this is the gyro chaser, and you're going to be chasing this one a long way. Um, so that concludes the videos on how to put it together. Uh, I'd like to thank you for buying this kit. I, I'm sure you're going to love it. Um, I, I, I love helicopters myself, and uh, I, I can't wait to get out to fly this one. Um, I know it's going to fly well. Um, so my name is Tim Van Milligan, and this is the uh, Apogee Building Series, and uh, thank you again.